evening, everybody. Thank you for coming and welcome to tonight's performance of Choose Your Own Improv. Everything you're going to see tonight is completely improvised. And so, without further ado, please welcome on stage the Banana Hut Gang. Woo! <laughs> childhood bedroom in Devon. <laughs> but anyway, you're very welcome. You must be here for the same reason I am. It's very sadly, my parents are selling my childhood home. Oh. Um, and so they've asked me to come here to pack up my room and put away all my stuff in boxes so that they can ship it out. Which sounds like a bit of a difficult task, but I'm going to be honest with you, it's been really fun. Like, I don't know if you've ever gone back through your old childhood toys. It, yeah, a few nods in the front here. <laughs> Super fun. For example, I've rediscovered all of my Barbie dolls, and you can see from this absolute armful of Barbies. Hello, come in, welcome. I'm just doing the opening, you're fine. <laughs> Hello. I'm just going to let you find your seat while I watch you with all these Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> Beatrice 
Beatrice, and my surname or my luck share? <laughs> I'm like Cher, I'm like Cher, just Beatrice, yeah. awesome. Um, and Beatrice has an interesting character trait. What is that interesting character trait about Beatrice? She's a potter. She's a potter. <laughs> <laughs> ah, allow it. A clay potter. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> What has she got to she got to do in this film noir? What's a little goal for her? Solve a mystery. Solve a mystery. Um, any more specific? <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> <laughs> Okay, love it. And, and finally, what is the name of our book? Beatrice does it again. Beatrice does it again. <laughs> and man front. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got film noir. My name is Beatrice. No surname. She is a potter. We're going to solve a mysterious mystery, and Beatrice does it again. The south of New York State is a rural place where there are lots of large pottery kilns. If you venture around the south, you can see large chimneys all around the countryside, dotted there, pumping smoke, lovely white puffy smoke up into the air. On the horizon sits New York City itself. A dark cloud of smog hangs over it. It's a polluted place, filled with people with cruel, cruel intentions. In the south of New York, there is a small town called Pottersville. <laughs> and in Pottersville, there are lots of small suburban dwellings. We see Beatrice the Potter <laughs> sitting in her home. She is waiting news from her husband. Beatrice, hello. Oh, hey. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Are you fine or are you okay? <laughs> Our first choice. Am I fine or am I okay? Fine? Fine. 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 We're going to do the cheering thing. No. Fine? Woo! Or okay? Yay! I'm only okay today, honey. Oh, that's devastating news, Beatrice. <laughs> Smoke? Yes, thank you. How's the potting been today? You potted many pots? Well, that's why I'm not okay today. That's why I'm only okay today. I've only done two, and normally I'd like to do four. But you've only done two pots? You've hardly potted at all, Beatrice. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Look, I know you're ambitious. I know you want to get ahead. I know you want to make your way into New York City. I do, damn it. But you're going to have to work harder than you're currently working. You're too, you're too lazy, Beatrice. <laughs> two pots in a day, that's... Preposterous. <laughs> I thought my husband would be more supportive. You'd have thought. <laughs> You'd have thought. Ever since I came down to Carolina, you plucked your, plucked your to come up here into the south of New York. Yes. You just have been lazing around. I'm sorry. Potting is just not as fruitful as I thought it was going to be. I know. I'm trying my hardest to get our PR practice off the ground. I know. It's hard in the city with all that smoke from the kilns. It's frustrating. <laughs> it is frustrating. People come into the office and they go, why all the pots? I say, my wife's a potter. <laughs> they say that doesn't justify the hundreds of pots. <laughs> it's like a garden center in here. <laughs> the terracotta warriors have nothing on your office. You <laughs> can't get the business, bitch. Oh, I need you to come in and help me with that. Okay. Look, I got a new mystery on the boil. I I have to be discreet. The moment the mystery is mysterious. <laughs> now I know you're ambitious and I know you're a little lazy, but <laughs> <laughs> and that is diametrically opposed, and so so you are torn as a character. But I need you to come up to town and look. Will you come up me, with me, or will you take the train in and meet me at my office? <laughs> okay. So I'm either going to go with my husband into town, or I'm going to take the train on my own. Take the train? Yeah! yeah. Go in with him? Yeah! I'm going to take the train. I need some time alone to think about what's been going on in the pottery today. That makes sense, but first, let's have our morning ghost. <laughs> 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 
We see New York City. It's dirty. It's dark. There's smoke everywhere. People are smoking. The peace. <laughs> There's a, uh... <laughs> Why am I smoking two cigarettes? <laughs> you see the entrance to a large hotel, which then spans upwards through the floors and floors to the top penthouse suite. We currently see a velvet room with lots of hanging velvet. <laughs> <laughs> and some rich people live there. <laughs> I really love that you've just hung velvet all around the room and makes it feel so warm and cozy. But the thing is, Gerald, what I'm most worried about is what my husband's going to do when he finds out oh. about our affair. I just, I think bad things are going to happen to me and I just don't know, I don't know if I can go through with this anymore. Hush now, Cassandra. We see a close-up. <laughs> there's nothing to fear. We're alone here. It's quiet. It's perfectly soundproof because there's so much velvet. <laughs> Nobody would possibly suspect you, a lonely cleaning lady, a maid from this very wonderful Ritz wanky hotel, with me. Gerald Newcross, old money. <laughs> That's my final name. <laughs> Double Your final name? My final name. Yeah. That's how the one you settled on. I did. <laughs> <laughs> the polls that you took, and then you settled on that one, yeah? Exactly, Cassandra. Yeah. You understand me. I do. And why don't you open uh, that drawer sitting underneath the, the mirror? My uh, wife's perfumes are sitting on it. Just have a little look in the drawer. A little token of my appreciation. My Gerald! It's the most beautiful brooch I've ever seen! It's shaped. Is this for me? It's all for you, Cassandra. Why, it's got diamonds and emeralds and rubies encrusted all over it. That must be worth a million dollars. It's worth one billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to wear this with pride, which is going to be quite impractical for the rest of the performance. <laughs> what do you mean performance, Cassandra? You're saying that this is all a lie? I well, know Gerald, what, special. what I didn't tell you is that as well as being a maid, I'm also an actress. And I've been performing the role of your mistress this entire time. Oh. I'm going to tell your wife everything, unless you give me all of the jewels that are in that case. You will rue the day that you thought you could get one over on me. You, you're, Cass you're Cassandra Newhart. You're, you're the one that the papers talked about. That's right. I'm new money. <laughs> yeah. you got to keep this quiet. My wife, she's vindictive. <laughs> so you got to give me all of those jewels? You leave me with no choice. I'm going to get this from you. <laughs> Let it stay with you. It's a, heavy. It's really heavy. <laughs> I like it, though. It looks great on you. I'm taking it with me. And I'm having somebody to come and get the rest of my things. <laughs> Not again. Meanwhile, on the train. This is the 6.45 to New York. 
I'll be coming to collect the tickets soon. Get your tickets. <laughs> Do you mind if I take this seat? Oh, no, not at all. I'll just put it back slightly so we're both visible on the track. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hear it all. You... Hang on a second. Are you fear, Chris? Uh, yes, I am. My wife's got all your pots. Oh, yeah. oh she's a big fan. Oh, I've got one of your ashtrays in my briefcase. Would you mind signing it? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, do you have a pet? Oh, I do. Here you go. Oh, if you could just make that out to... Well, it should really be for my wife, but to me. I'm Peter Jefferson. If you could make it out to me, that would be great. Tickets, please. So oh, tickets. Um, Sorry, just give me one second. I don't have any money. Um, if you it, don't have any money, you can't be on the train. Oh, Beatrice, I could either get off the train or, or maybe you could pay for my ticket for me. Do I want to pay for his ticket or do I want to get him to get off the train? Pay for a ticket? Yeah! yeah. Pay to get off the train? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Would you like to go back to the husband decision or the train decision? <laughs> tickets, please. If you don't have any money, you can't be on the train. Would it be okay if you go on my ticket? Oh, Peter, of course. My wife won't believe this crazy story. Oh, you see, we've got like 16 children and it's so hard just keeping up with them all. <laughs> Okay, so this character doesn't know what I'm going to the city for, so I'll fill in that blank for him. Do I 
want to um, stay here and help this character with their uh, mystery, or do I want to go in and help my husband with PR work PR? Yeah. yeah! Or help this guy? Yeah! yeah. Well, I was supposed to be going in to meet my husband, but he told me I was lazy this morning, so I didn't <laughs> him. Um, I'm going to stay with you. The Pottery News never said you had a husband. You were just always this elusive, you know, elusive potter, and we just thought, oh, Beatrice. Yeah, it's because I've got no surname, so no one knows if I'm married or not. <laughs> <laughs> train and grab a coffee and I'll tell you all about my story. That's Meanwhile, in Jerry's office. <laughs> She's not come again, Doris. <laughs> <laughs> We're just sat here surrounded by pots. And she's out there doing whatever she does. I feel like Sonny, if she were Cher. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I'm a married man, and when you look at me with those slightly vibrating lips, I can't I feel so much in my unmentionables. I just can't help myself. Doris, Jerry, Doris, I'm gonna put this part here. Oh. <laughs> doing things to me, Doris. You know I've got this mystery for unravels. Oh, that just caused attention to it. <laughs> Is this better? <laughs> this is just gonna knock down some of these pots. Oh, oh, oh gosh, you know how I love the destruction pots. Look! I've got, I've got this old money character coming in to talk to me about a mystery. Right. I can't be fully erect when no. he comes in. <laughs> what should I do with him? Right. I'll take off my clothes. <laughs> we're going to have to get a bigger pot. <laughs> should, I, should I run around? Oh, Doris! Doris, look! Look, you go out and open it. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going to take some deep breaths. Hopefully I'll calm down. And I'll get a this, bucket of water. Yeah. You see if this old money guy's turned up yet. Oh, my God. She's just so alluring. <laughs> In the new cross household. Gerald, is that you? Gerald? I can hear someone in the house. Sorry, ma'am. Where's my husband? Has he returned yet? I, I, I don't know. I, I was just told to come in here and clean the silver. Clean the silver? Okay. Hiding <laughs> behind the suit of armor was the best decision that Gerald ever made. <laughs> <laughs> my husband? He's been, well, he's been coming home late recently, and I'm starting to get worried. I understand. That can be awful lonesome. It is. I just, well, I'm worried, you see. I'm worried that, well, maybe he's being unfaithful. What, whatever would, would make you think that? Well, it's the, the smell. The smell on his neck when he returns from home. It's not my smell. My smell is peaches. <laughs> the smell I smell on his neck is fear. Fear by Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> I don't wear fear. It's not my scent. Why am I cleaning if you're here? <laughs> <laughs> Have no 
more need for this old money, do we? New money? <laughs> no. <laughs> no armor for you, nighty night, boy. No! <laughs> Let's find some new blood, new money. At the train station the coffee shop. <laughs> Get you another coffee or in a briefcase. I've got a shot of whiskey. What would you like? Do I want another coffee or do I want a shot of whiskey? Coffee? Yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> <laughs> right. whiskey? Yeah. to go to the agent or go back to his house. Agent? Yes. Yes. Back to his house? Yes. We can get to the agent later. Maybe we should go back to your house. Well, I'm on the phone, so maybe, you know, we could phone him back there. And okay. my, my wife the works 12 jobs to take her Staggering drunk through the streets of New York, they passed smoky, billowing uh, pipes coming up from the sewers. Their gait was rather inhibited by the alcohol that they had taken in when Jerry passed them the other way on the street. <laughs> it's just this. Jerry! Who's this? Hustler! Oh, this is my friend Peter. Oh, oh, oh I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, that's not very nice. Look at this one. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I waited all day. I'm sorry. I waited all day for you. I'm sorry. For my wife to come and support me. And He's got a mystery. I had a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> You're ghosting me! I'm, so... I'm sorry, Jerry, but his sounds really important. It's the theater group who keeps stealing jewels, I think. We need to look into it more, really. You are my wife. I am. Wait. Not anymore, you're not. What? In southern New York, you could just say the words, you were my wife, and then suddenly the divorce has happened. <laughs> I loved you. And I wanted to build my business, my PR practice, with you. And instead, you went gallivanting around with this guy. And it's over between us. And if I ever can, I will take my revenge on the both of you. Jerry! You know what? I've been carrying this ashtray around for years since our marriage. You made it the day we got engaged. I remember. Oh, Jerry! It's over. And if I ever see you again, I'll kill you. I'll kill the both of you. So extreme. 
you the right person to be here over me just because you were here first? Yes. But I am wildly more qualified. But Boris. we're selling antiques, so... Selling antiques in a hotel? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Well, maybe that's why the business isn't so good, is it? This antique, it is a pot. And on it is a Ming Dynasty etching. How much do you think it's worth, Boris? <laughs> Are you listening? To I'm that? analyzing. Stop being a jerk. <laughs> Come on, Boris, if you can get it's right thirty two dollars. <laughs> Not ours. Thirty two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> right, well what about this large flag from Antarctica? <laughs> How much is that? <laughs> Thirty-three dollars, Morris. That is how much that flag is worth. Yes, well, what I find very interesting is how that woman came in here the other day trying to sell her jewels, yet she said it was worth a billion dollars. A billion dollars. In 1950-something. <laughs> a billion dollars. <laughs> a billion dollars. Could you believe it? For jewels. 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 There was quite a lot of rubies and... Wit. Wit. I think I might have heard of such a thing. Yes. It's here in the front of our desk. But I told her I don't have a billion dollars to sell you, buy that from you, to sell that. But if I buy it from you for a billion, that's the one! How did you get that? It's just a picture. It's de deceptively detailed. Gosh! Was this the one? Oh, yes, no, that is a picture. Was this the one? Yes, it this was is that. worth a billion dollars. How could that be worth a billion dollars? Everything in the world is costs something in the region of the $30 mark, <laughs> from $30 to $40. But this is a billion, is a billion dollars. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the New Bloods front room, we did it, honey. I know. We've got billions. I know. Billions coming in. It's so beautiful, isn't it's it? so beautiful. You're so beautiful, my darling. Now we've got rid of those old bloods, we need a new plan. But I'm worried that the trail is running high. I'm worried that there's people after us. There's journalists. There's detectives. We're going to have to make a pretty smart next move. Go on. I was thinking, I'd like to hunt them out. I'd like to put them out before they come too close to us, before they get too close to you. I want to see them bleed. <coughs> Do you feel me? Do you feel the blood? <laughs> well, who's that at the door? I wonder if it's trouble. Now, who is the other side of that door? I got a special delivery for the new bloods. You've been shopping again, honey? Mm. No. I don't think that's anything to do with, with me. Hello there. You've got a delivery for me? A very special delivery for the new bloods. 
Can I come in, please? It's a rather large package. <laughs> okay, come on in. Can I just put it down in the middle of the room? Go on. Put it right down. Shh, shh. That was a big box. <laughs> And it's a special box that just peels away and you can see what's inside. Oh my god, it's a giant pot! It's got writing written all over it. Read it to me, baby. <laughs> oh, you want a tip? Yeah, please, sir. <laughs> For reference, your tip, your tip hand looks like a beckon. <laughs> you know, just some feedback. Dear New Bloods, my name is Jerry. I don't have a surname. Don't ask. My wife made this pot. I think you'll agree it's beautiful. It's a pretty beautiful pot. It's enormous. It's on a small rabbit and a toad. And I think there's a hedgehog on there. It's like the Lake District. <laughs> I don't know where that is, sir, because we're in New York. So. Okay. <laughs> this part may be beautiful, but my wife is dark of heart. Can you kill her, please? She's on to your trail. Well, you're so good at that. You should do it again. <laughs> Maybe this man will give you more than pots. Maybe he'll give you pots. <laughs> That's why I married you, baby. Now I'm gonna go. Gonna go kill this girl. You've outlived your welcome. Oh! Honey, you're very good at that, but uh, it's it's beginning to get us in trouble. We keep leaving a trail of dead bodies wherever we go. I think. I think that, you know, earlier when you were talking about how the trail is running hot, I think it's... Oh, it's the, it's the death, isn't it? It's the death of the trail. Yeah, it's you, actually. Yeah, you were doing actually real, you were doing a real good I job. very good at... We've got billions from you, me, we come on, we caught by like two people. You just keep killing everybody. There's only one solution to this. Kill more people. Let's kill. <laughs> Far out. I'm sorry. I don't know why we got the train here and decided to walk back. It's been so long that the evening paper's on my front door. Oh my gosh. What? Double homicide at the New Cross Old Money Mansion. Oh my god. And it says further on down in the story that all their jewels were stolen. That must be the mystery. God damn the New York Daily News ran it without my byline. God damn them. <laughs> well. Well, hang on. It says here at the bottom, the only clue that turned up three hours later was a small pot. That's, that's your signature design. Yeah, it's got frogs on it. I don't understand what that could mean. Quite honestly, you're just too dangerous to be around. I've been punched and... What? I don't know. Well, that's not me. I've been with you all day. You know that. It well, must have been... Well, I don't... Jerry, he's got my pots. I think you've either got a choice. You can either just go on this mystery on your own or prove you're a good woman and come and meet my 16 children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm either going to go ahead and solve the mystery on my own, or I'm going to go and meet his children. Solve the mystery? Yeah! yeah. Meet his children. Yeah. <laughs> mystery be damned, let's meet the kids. Uh, well, I'm so glad you took that option. <laughs> I'm going to open the door and they're all going to come out. Like <laughs> the sound of music. That film's been made. Yeah. Well, here we go. Come on out. Oh! <laughs> I lied about them having a mom. Oh. She's dead. Oh. And, Are well, you our new mommy? 
Yeah. 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 Gather in, um, and on the count of three, everybody say peel. Yeah. 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 